Welcome to our good our missionary stories for children. We're so thankful that you tuned in. We know that these lessons are tremendous for every age. Although we call them for children, they are for everyone. And we are rejoicing in this great lesson on Nathan of Jerusalem. What a blessing this story is. And to teach us how boys can learn to love the way that we should learn to love. This is the most exciting story, and it is about a little boy that lived in the America, and his grandparents came to see him. Now, this is Nathan. They came to see him, and they stayed for a whole year. When the time came for him to leave, though, he wept, and he told him not to be ashamed of tears. His grandfather did, because he was weeping also. So his grandfather told him before he left that he has a real secret for him. He wanted him to know that he was going to pay for their trip for him to come to Jerusalem for his bar mitzvah. And he was so excited over this, but he could certainly keep a secret. And after his grandfather left, he had been to a happy day club. He had heard about the Messiah. And he told his grandfather, he says, you know the Messiah is coming to Israel, coming to Jerusalem, and we are waiting. He says, oh, I've heard he's already come. And he told him not to listen to that foolishness. But he heard the truth, and he was a thinker. His grandfather always told him to think. So when he went, he learned that Jesus was the true Messiah. And he left. He, the first day, he didn't go in. But then he left, but he went back. He had to find out if this was true. So she told him, that Christ had already come, he had died on the cross, and that he ascended back into heaven. Now this is a, a something that he had never heard before, and he was thinking about all that she had told him. And he, he really ascended, but he's coming back again. And this is something that this boy loved to hear. Now, I'm going to ask all of you, his grandfather taught him the word. The first five books of the Bible was their Torah. They listened to the Old Testament. They did not read the New Testament. But that is the five books that you need to learn in these lessons. And when she read to him from Isaiah, then he started thinking more. This was from his Old Testament. So anyway, he heard this truth, and then he was not very nice to her. This was a hard thing because he was always taught to respect his elders and to always be nice to anyone. But when she told him she was a Christian Jew, he said, how can that be? But he knew something because she knew too much about the Old Testament. And he thought that all Gentiles were Christians. But she told him that was not true. So she has got this little boy so confused, and yet he knows that she is telling the truth. So he had to go back and tell her that he was sorry that he got angry with her. And he said, my mother and my father would not like that. But he didn't tell his mother and his father what he was learning. And then 
One day his dad came in and told him that they were going to go to Israel to live. Oh, he thought, I'm going to be there for my bar mitzvah. We're going to be living there. And he was so excited because he knew what grandfather had told him, and that was a secret, but he did not tell anyone even after his dad told him they were moving there. Now this story will touch your heart more than any story we have ever told. And in John 17, it teaches us Christ high priestly prayer before he went back to heaven. And this teaches us the greatest lessons for every true believer. He says in verse 3, and this is life eternal. This is life eternal, that ye may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. And he says, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work that thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self with the glory which I had before the world began. What a blessing this is for every person. And this is something that we are going to use this as a goal that we may know him and manifest Christ. To make known Christ to the world, the only true God. I want you to memorize John 17, 3, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we're so thankful that we can call thee Father. As we study this book, we see how great our Heavenly Father is, our God. In the name of Christ, Christ is our rock. He's our redeemer. He's our savior. He is the only true and living God. He's living. And this book is the shining light of the glory of Christ. We want to get this out to every child in the whole world. And we're praying for every person that hears these lessons that they will turn to this true God today. And we are asking for 100 fold. Thank thee for giving us these lessons that teach us how great thou art and thy great love for each other. In Christ's name we pray, amen. So when we come to this lesson, we saw how she taught him about the Trinity. He said, how do you worship three gods? Well, he, she, he said, and this is in Deuteronomy, and we need to turn to these scriptures because I know many of you Pray just like Christ tells us in this book in Psalm 129 to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace shall be within thy walls and prosperity in thy palaces. So he told her and to turn to Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. This is how we are to do. Our heart is our intellect, our emotions, and our will. And then God has given us these words. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. Now you turn to chapter 6 of Deuteronomy and read this. And thou shalt teach them diligently to thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Now this is something the Jews did. They taught the word of God. And when they were 13 years old, they became a man, and they had their bar mitzvah, which we're going to find out in these lessons today. So, after his dad told him that he was going to go back to 
Jerusalem to Israel to live, he had to go back and talk to his teacher. And he told her that they were going to leave. She told him to come back one more time before he left to go to Israel. She had said, we're going to have lessons on David. But when he got there, she taught him about the Messiah coming as a little baby and that he came to go to the cross to die for the sins of the world. But the best part about this is he arose from the dead. He arose from the dead and then he ascended into heaven and he's coming back again. So she asked if anyone wanted to receive Christ that day and if something started stirring in his heart. He really wanted to, but he said, oh, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't because my grandfather, I couldn't. So he slipped out while she was praying and she didn't see him again before he left, but she still prayed for him. So the day came when they got on the plane to go to Israel. Oh, how excited this was for him. He sat by the window and all he could think about was having his bar mitzvah at the welling wall in Jerusalem. Oh, how excited that was for him. He wanted this to happen because his grandfather had already told him it was going to. So they ate on the plane. They had, of course, kosher food, which they, the Jews, eat kosher food. And then after they eat, they had their lunch and then their dinner. And if you drink milk, you cannot drink milk with your food, with meat, until after six hours. Now, this is something exciting. So after six hours, he said, Father, can I drink my milk now? He said, yes. And then after this, the, his mother got by the window for a while. And she told him, now we're only two hours from where I was born in Holland. And she said, I have never told you that I was born in a tiny room in Holland because many of the Jews had to hide and the people in Holland hid many of the Jews to keep them from being killed. This was the most horrible time in the world. But she said, I know you're going to ask, why were they killing the Jews? She said, I truly don't know why. I don't know exactly why. But she said, I don't want to talk about that now. I just want to tell you that God was good and kept us from being killed like other Jews. That's why we want to obey God's word because these people were so afraid, but there was someone that loved them and hid them. And this was one of the ladies. And she was born in a little tiny room and they were protected by people that loved them. You see, you're going to learn in these lessons that God loves us all the same. So then when they arrived in Israel, of course, they were so excited. They saw his grandparents waiting for them. How wonderful this was for him to go and to see his grandparents, how he loved them. Then after they, there was a highway from Tel Aviv until they got to Jerusalem. And then this was a narrow street. And this was the apartment where his grandfather lived in Mia Shirem. And they, he didn't even lock their doors. They were all ultra Orthodox Jews. And they were Orthodox Jews. They were very strict in the things that they believed in. And he saw that paved courtyard. How did they get all those stones packed in there? So beautiful. And this place was wonderful. 
they got there the neighbors that were coming in the next day bringing food welcoming them from America all day long they kept coming in saying Shalom Shalom peace peace so he went to bed that night and the next morning when he got up it was noon they told him to say his prayers because it was six o'clock back in Chicago where they came from and he she said say your prayers and we will have lunch and he said I haven't had breakfast but she said today this is how we're getting used to the new time so off and on the people came in what an exciting time this was for their neighbors because they have such love for each other and they didn't even have to knock at the door they just came in so the next day after they were more used to the different time change they said, we're going to go sightseeing today. So they walked down the street, and there was a rabbi there, and they were going to all the different shops and markets. And he found a star of David for his wife, his father did, and his father brought him a, sh a prayer shawl, and they also brought him the things that he needed for his bar mitzvah. Now, this is hard to say, and it is a case that they put on their arms. As we have seen, this is a, a five lac tears, and forgive me for not being able to say this, and they put it on their arm. They start with their little finger, and then they also have to put the little box up to their shoulders, right up to their elbow, with a box of memory verses, also on their head. This is the most amazing thing, and everything he needed, he bought it. They bought it for him to practice, because you have to put that on your arm exactly right, and to know all the Bible verses and the questions that they ask. What a blessing! We should do this here. Every one of us should do this with our families. And they learned those scriptures, the best thing. So then after they did this, the rabbi that owned this little shop, they all went to the synagogue to pray. The women go upstairs and they look down through a hole and the men go into the service. After they did this, he said, Father, I want to go to the Welling Wall. Now, when Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 AD, this is the only part that was left, this wall of the temple. And they come here, the Jews do, and they pray. They pray for their Messiah to come. They read the scriptures. They rail and cry. They make noises and cry, wanting the Messiah to come. Now, this is true of every Jew. They are looking for the Messiah to come and reign as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That's why they rejected Christ when he came. But they are looking for the true Messiah. Now, in the Old Testament, Jesus Christ was the prophet that was to come. They pro God promised us a Messiah, a Savior, in Genesis 3.15, after Adam and Eve sinned. Every animal that was slain from that time on was looking and pointing to the time when Christ, this prophet, would come and go to the cross and die for our sins. Now, he's our great high priest. Christ is the prophet, priest, and king. And he is going to reign as king. That's why today we must pray in Christ's name because we cannot get to the Father except through Christ. 
So they go to the welling wall and they pray. So his father and his grandfather left to go to look at the apartments that they had seen, wanting to see if this is where they were going to live. So he said, may I stay, Father, may I stay? And his grandfather said, let him stay. He will be all right. You know, their place where they lived was just as safe as any place on the earth. And he met a little friend. As soon as he was, had stopped, he met this little friend. And he said to him, and they started talking right away. This little friend, he said, hello. He said, I would like to be your friend. And Nathan, he couldn't believe this. He said, oh, he said, I need a friend. I just came here from America and I have no friends. The only people I have are my family that is here. And he said, when he first said, hello, shalom, shalom. That is the first way you meet anybody. And as, as a Jew, that means peace, peace. So he said, peace, he said, shalom, shalom. And this little boy, he didn't know his name yet. He said, I say, Ale, M-A-A-K. Now, I cannot pronounce this, so I don't want to offend anyone which means God with us. And so he, as he said this, it's the most amazing thing that he, this is how they believe because God be with you is what, he, what he's saying to him. And when he said, I would like to be your friend, this is what he told him. And then he said to the little boy, he reached out, Nathan did, to shake his hands. And he reached out and shook his hand. And then he said, this is where I live, right over there. We don't have a front door. We go in the back door because when the Jews started coming to the welling wall to pray, we didn't want to offend them. So we go in the back way. And this thrilled him to death. He says, we respect their religion. Tears came down Nathan's eyes. Again, he held out his hand and shook the hands of this little Arab boy. And they, he said, my name is Ali Joseph. And he said, my name is da Nathan David. I'll look for you when I come again. He said, I am going to have my bar mitzvah here. I want you to come. Once again, this was so kind of these two. The very first time they met, there was something about them that they loved each other. Now, it doesn't matter if you are a Jew, if you are a Gentile, if you are an Arab, we are to love the same way every day. These two boys are teaching us how to live, that God loves everyone. So he said, there, there's two men looking. Are they looking for you? He said, yes, that's my father and my grandfather. They are looking for an apartment. And then they went home. When they went home, his he said to his mother, now his mother and his grandmother had been out looking themselves and the men were going to do other things. And he said, grandmother, can I go outside? I will stay in the courtyard. So I will hear you call me when you have dinner ready. So when he went outside, he heard a child crying and he looked up on the veranda. And when he looked up, he saw this mother putting this little boy on this stool and this man cutting his hair. And the mother then began crying and they cut all of his hair off. He kept the locks, the forelocks, like we showed you that his grandfather wears. And 
hurts. He was crying because he didn't want his hair to be cut. And she said, the mother did, now you are three years old. You become a real Jew. Oh, Nathan's mind is going crazy. What all of the things that he had learned. What things, why do they do these things? Everybody is different. Everybody does something different. But God loves them all the same. This is the most important thing you can ever learn from these lessons. You do not look from the outside of people. God looks on the heart. And every person has a soul. And it is the blood that makes an atonement for our souls. So while they were eating dinner that night, all he could see was the apartment that they were wanting to look at. He saw this apartment building. Oh, how he thought, I want to live there. It's close to the Welling Wall, and it's close to Ale. Already, they have a bond that every true person needs. This is what we're going to learn in these lessons. The great bond of Jew and Arab, Gentile, everyone loving, the way God loves us. And you know, he is no respecter of persons. So after they had, had eaten, the, his father and his mother went to look at the apartments. And his grandfather said, we are going to practice and I'm going to teach you the lessons. So this is what he did. He was beginning to see all of the things that he needed to know for his bar mitzvah when he was 13 years old. Oh, the joy of giving out the word to you people today. There is no greater joy on earth. And I'm praying that through all these lessons that you will memorize John 17 and see what Christ did for us before he went to the cross to tell us the riches that we have in being his child. This is the greatest that, that, we, that this we may make known and manifest Christ. If ye are of the world, the world would love you his own. But because you're not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. You must, this is John 17, and this is, this was John 15, verse 19. And John 17 shows us his great love for us. Missionary, God's own emissary, be a missionary.